After being exclusive to Sony for so many years, the Persona franchise eventually started testing the waters out on other platforms with some spin-offs, mainly due to the fact that Sony wasn't dominating the video game world by nearly as much as they used to be when the first four Persona games were running wild, especially in the handheld market where the 3DS was whooping the Vita's booty all over the place. And since Persona games have always been quite fond of portables, it only made sense for Atlas to bring Persona games over to the 3DS. Not once, not thrice, not thrice, but twice with Persona Q's 1 and 2. And seeing how Nintendo's current portable slash home console is basically a vacation home for ports of games that were originally made for other consoles, one would think that these two spin-off RPGs had come over as well, seeing as how, you know, they're already Nintendo games to begin with. But I gotta say that after finishing the first Persona Q game myself, and having just started a file in Persona Q2, I can't say that I agree with that statement. So sit back in your fluffiest chair, press the subscribe button if you like games, goofs, and glory, and allow me, YouTube's top-rated hunk seven years in a row, Cameron all one word, to tell you why Persona Q's 1 and 2 should not be ported over to the Nintendo Switch, or even the PS5 anytime soon. Okay, so even though I'm quite fond of Persona games to the point where the entire franchise may or may not have put out a restraining order against me, I just don't think that the Persona Q games are a fit for any platform that isn't the Nintendo 3 dual screen. You see, the Persona Q games are pretty much Etri and Odyssey clones, and if you've never played those games before, then they're basically straightforward dungeon crawlers that have you use the bottom screen to draw maps out yourself. And you know, I'm guessing Atlas really liked these games, seeing as how they made like 8 million of them. In fact, I think the main reason Persona Q even exists in the first place is just to raise awareness for Etri and Odyssey. You know, kind of like how the Earth made humans just so it could get plastic in those Sonic the Hedgehog ice cream bars. I mean, after all, the Persona Q games got my fat ass to buy the Etri and Odyssey games, so I can't say that it didn't work, but sadly, it was too little too late since these games kind of don't work without touch controls, and the 3DS is about as alive as my Uncle Eddie used to smoke cigarettes with nicotine patches on, and like, I suppose he could drop maps on a separate screen with a controller, but meh, that'd be lame as poop, and not only would it suck for these games to get ported over to the Switch's handheld exclusives that you can't even play on your TV, but having both the gameplay and your maps on the Switch his tablet at the same time wouldn't even work that well anyway, especially without a stylus, seeing as how not all of us could afford that fancy schmancy soap to wash our hands with every time we want to play a damn video game. Yeah, I suppose you could port these games over to newer consoles and just leave all the map nonsense out, but uh, that kinda is the whole draw to these games in the first place. No pun intended, even though I noticed it and didn't take it out of the script, so I guess it kinda was intended. But don't get me wrong, these games are still pretty fun based on all the dungeon exploring mechanics alone, but I just don't think that they're good enough to stand out on modern consoles. And sure, not every game needs to light the world on fire, especially if they're just ports, but when Switch owners have been fiending for Persona games ever since Joker joined the Smash roster, the last thing that Atlas needs to expose this curious audience to is anything other than a mainline Persona game, especially if they're just ports or spin-offs. Like, I know that the Persona Q games were already exposed to Nintendo fans all the way back in 2014, and nobody gave a monkey's nutsack back then, but that was before Joker created all this buzz with Smash Ultimate, so if Persona Q comes to the Switch before the real deal games do, then I think that it only turned people off to the entire franchise who might have otherwise been hooked with a mainline game. I mean, it's bad enough that Persona 5 Scramble is going to be the first Persona game for a lot of people since the gameplay doesn't even remotely resemble what the main series is all about. But I mean, I'm pretty sure most people could figure that out themselves by making the correlation between Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warriors and realize that it's just a spin-off. On the other hand, though, most people have no idea what Etri and Odyssey is, even if they owned a 3DS, so I think there's a pretty good chance that bringing Persona Q over to the Switch or even the PS5 would lead to a lot of people trying it out for themselves and then just deciding that the entire Persona franchise just isn't for them. Again, that's not to say that Persona Q is bad, but not only would it lose a lot from the lack of touch controls, but these games were never even meant to create new Persona fans in the first place. They were just meant to cater to the ones who already existed. You see, the whole idea with Persona is that each game introduced a brand new cast, and rather than making direct sequels to use the core gameplay mechanics, Atlas instead decides to milk each cast with a series of spin-offs, anime, manga, and slightly enhanced re-releases that retcon the original games. And the whole deal with the Persona Q spin-offs in particular is that while the gameplay is almost nothing like the core series outside of using Personas in turn-based battles, they both happen to feature casts from two to three different Persona games all working together by time-traveling in the middle of their respective stories. I'm not gonna say too much more than that to avoid spoilers, but according to Atlas, the Q game games are in fact canon, so the main hook for Persona fans here is to see all the characters they're already attached to from all the different Persona games interacting with each other and the whole world's colliding aspect and all that. But if you've never actually played a Persona game for yourself, then not only will you not have any idea what's going on, but you're also not gonna care either. I wouldn't be that against putting these games on PlayStation consoles, since Sony fans would at least have fun with the dialogue and exploring the dungeons, even if they can't draw the maps out themselves. But you know what, if Atlas is gonna go through the trouble of remastering these games, then I kinda feel like they should put it on every modern console at the same time, and since the Switch would need to get the mainline games first, then I kinda think that Q should just hold off across the board, especially since these games probably wouldn't even sell that well anyway. I mean, I'd buy it, but I don't know if you would. 
I know a lot of people don't think that mainline Persona games are ever going to come to Nintendo consoles, and I've already made way too many videos going into great detail on the topic that I'll link in the description and comments to spare longtime viewers from hearing me spew on about it again. But I do feel the need to say that even after Operation Moonfall, it still took Nintendo four years to put Majora's Mask on the 3DS, despite how easy it must have been after porting Ocarina of Time. And even though Nintendo had to have known for years in advance that they'd end up doing it, they still let fans keep wanting it more and more without ever actually confirming it until very shortly before the actual release date. So, you know, I just don't think that two years is enough time to write off mainline Persona games on the Switch just yet. Personally, I think it's pretty obvious that Atlas shouldn't be in any kind of rush to remaster the Persona Q games, but seeing as how they asked fans if they wanted to see Etri and Odyssey games on the Switch via survey, I realize that Persona Q probably isn't all that far-fetched, especially since I'm pretty sure Atlas would have liked to have made a little bit more money off of Persona Q that sold pretty terribly since it came out on the 3DS after the Switch was already out. And after all, that's why they never even bothered dubbing the game for an international release, and, you know, it would be nice to see the game finally get a dub on the Switch, which I'm sure Atlas would do since more people would actually buy it, and even beyond that, I'm sure they'd also add a few more bonuses and on top of that for good measure. You know, things like better graphics, obviously, and other extra content, like being able to play your game without it randomly freezing, which happened to me twice after beating a 45-minute boss battle, and apparently this happened to a lot of other people as well. Ordinarily, I'd just stop playing a game altogether over something dumb like this, but after 70 hours, <laughs> I just kept trying and hoping for the best. Somehow, someway, I'm pretty sure that playing the game with headphones is what triggered the freeze to begin with, oddly enough, but honestly, it could just be a coincidence that the game happened to run properly every time I wasn't playing it with headphones, but my point is that this issue would hopefully be resolved with a possible Switch or PS5 version, since I'm pretty sure Atlas isn't about to patch a 3DS game from 2014 if they're not even going to respond to my email, so I'm not saying that Persona Q or Etri and Odyssey games should never be remastered. In fact, I think it'd be a shame for these games to just remain in limbo on the 3DS for the rest of eternity. I just don't think that they should be remastered any time in the near future, is all. Then again, the English voice actors might not always be around, so maybe Atlas should just record the lines now to get it out of the way, you know? I know that's not practical by any means, but I personally want it, so they should and probably will listen, right? Right? Well, at least I think so, but anyway, let me know what you think about Persona Q games coming to the Switch in the comments below, and as always, I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody at some point. If you liked this video, though, then you just might like my most recent video going into detail about how mainline Persona games are still coming to the Nintendo Switch. But that's all for now, though, because I gotta go drop my stepdad off at community service and then never pick him up again because I don't respect him. Later. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.